So what is step one in our BLAST One's Performance 3 process? To prove the interdependence of your linked components, let's start at the very end of your BLAST nozzle with the orifice. Now this rather small opening works in direct relationship with the very first component, your air compressor. And what ties this entire equipment chain together is one critical component, air. For practical understanding, let's introduce the analogy of a water hose. At the very end of the water hose, you also find an orifice. The volume of water that flows through the hose and then out that orifice depends on the opposite far end of the hose with the valve and spigot. The larger the spigot and the more open the valve, the more water flows. Whether it's water or air, let's temporarily label this moving volume as flow. Let's now find a use for this flow. Suppose we have mud caked onto a surface and wish to wash it off. By allowing the flow to encounter the mud, the water can wash the surface clean. But as every eight-year-old child has learned, if we want to wash it off quickly, we simply need to restrict the orifice with our thumb. This restriction of the flow now causes an increase in pressure. And this increased pressure has improved the overall efficiency of our cleaning system because it now takes less time and less water to wash the mud off the surface. Here's a key concept for us to introduce at this point. Efficiency can be defined as the combined time, effort, and resources needed to accomplish a goal. The less time, effort, and resources needed, the more efficient a system is. Your goal is to have the most efficient blasting system possible. Efficiency is your golden goose. Less time, effort, and resources to complete a project improves your profitability. From our hose example, it becomes evident that pressure is one determinant affecting the efficiency in cleaning the surface. Increasing the pressure decrease the time needed to clean the surface. But what about flow? What about this volume of water moving through the hose? Is that important as well? Well, suppose we reduce the water flow, but keep the same restriction on the orifice. Now, as you can see, although the restriction remains the same, it now takes much longer to wash the surface. Much of the performance three strategy you're about to learn is grounded in the following concept. Flow times pressure equals efficiency. Optimal flow and optimal pressure produce optimal efficiency. Reductions in either flow or pressure reduce efficiency, meaning your project will require more time, more abrasive, higher labor costs, increased rental fees, more diesel for the compressor, etc. So let's leave the water and hose analogy and return to our blasting operation. The hypothetical setup we'll discuss from here on out is a basic one operator layout. One blaster, one nozzle. If we could eliminate all the intermediary equipment, this would produce an ideal setup to measure and optimize both flow and pressure, which in turn would optimize our efficiency. But in the real world, the need for each of these components reduces both flow and pressure, which can have dire consequences on your overall efficiency unless it's managed extremely well. For example, each one PSI of pressure loss results in a 1.5% efficiency loss. Losing just 13 PSI results in a 19% efficiency loss, which over the course of five days time is the same as losing a full day. Therefore, one of our goals is to help you mitigate all the components that negatively affect pressure and flow. And together, throughout this series, we'll troubleshoot each weak link in the system. So where is the best place to begin? Let's start at the very beginning with the compressor itself which is oftentimes the most limiting handicap to the system's optimal flow and pressure. Since the flow of air is measured in cubic feet per minute, I'll be using these terms, flow and CFM, interchangeably throughout this series. Tip number one, the compressor should be large enough to compensate for all the linked equipment that rob your system of flow and pressure, while not over-delivering and thus costing a fortune in diesel. This is often a delicate balance. Tip number two, avoid inbuilt compressor aftercoolers. We have found that they can lower your pressure up to 15 PSI, which is an immediate 22% drop in efficiency. And that's even before the other components take their cut of your flow and pressure as well. Air prep is important, but we'll handle the cooling and drying goal in a future video. Tip number three, besides calculating for all the flow and pressure vampires along the chain, your compressor size is primarily determined by one item, 
the size of the blast nozzle's orifice. Returning to the orifice once again, a standard rule of thumb is your air pressure should be 100 to 110 psi at the nozzle. This allows for maximum cleaning of the surface without overblasting. The larger the orifice, the more CFM is needed to maintain this pressure. Therefore, a practical strategy is to size your compressor based on the nozzle size being used. Here is a chart that shows the optimal CFM based on nozzle size. The recommendations listed take into account the CFM lost by the chain of equipment along the way. Therefore, if you are seeking 100 PSI while using a number seven blast nozzle, your compressor needs to deliver a minimum output of 312 CFM. In closing, we'd like to address one final question some may be having. Which is more important, CFM or pressure? And there's no definitive answer because whenever one or the other is reduced, your overall efficiency is reduced as well. Now it's easier to create pressure and compensate for low CFM by simply attaching a smaller nozzle. For example, if CFM is low, 100 PSI pressure can be achieved by simply dropping one to two nozzle sizes. Maybe you drop from a number seven to a number five. The smaller orifice creates restriction and increases pressure. Now, this may help produce 100 PSI at the nozzle, but the size of the blast pattern is now significantly reduced, taking more time, more labor, and more diesel to complete the job. Therefore, we advise that optimizing CFM be your first priority. If you take care to correctly size your compressor based on the layout of your job site components, you can safeguard against a lack of flow threatening your efficiency and thus threatening your profitability. We've got a lot of customers asking us, what size compressor do I need? And the answer always is, well, it depends on what size nozzle you use, of course. Well, what size nozzle do I need? Chicken or the egg, right? So if I was to blast this wall behind me, let's say 10 by 10 area, 100 square foot, how fast do I want to get it done in? If I used a number eight nozzle, maybe it would take me half an hour. If I used a number four nozzle, maybe it would take me two and a half hours. So it's all got to be weighed up in how quickly do I want to get the job done and how much money do I want to spend for getting that work done. So let me give you an example. If a 185 compressor will support a number four nozzle and I can get that wall done in just two hours, I'm going to, going to use a few gallons of diesel and maybe the rent will only cost me $500 compared to if I got a 900 CFM compressor and used a number 10 blast nozzle, I'm going to use 16 gallons of diesel and the compressor is going to cost me $2,000 and I'm only finishing it two hours or an hour and a half quicker, what have I gained? So you've got to balance cost with time and the needs of the job. Hope that helps. Thank you. So what's our next focus? Well, having produced the optimal flow needed, we now need to transport that flow to our nozzle's orifice. Step two is optimizing our hoses.